the sea. A mistress of mystery within each glistening eye that flows through each soul that swims in its path. An easy wash of daily messes in its purest of forms. Dancer of the air and miss and swimmer of the sky you can be held. Each day we find something new in the abyss that fascinates the minds of those who dare to explore. The fascination only pushes the imagination to picture what else may lurk in the deepest of waters. Now think about the myths and legends about the deep. You could think that it was nothing more than imagination taking over a bored soul that has spent too much time on a bored vessel. But think of this. Imagination only grows more with the exposure to such elements. In fact, it grows more with more with what we see more than it does than with the more we use it. So the tales of half human, half fish like beings that roam the waters. Could they be true? Yes, I am talking about mermaids. The legends of humanoid species of fish. The various legends from all around the world are what bring forward a new episode of Journals of Supernatural Adventure. My name is Dakota Franson. And we are about to reveal the stories behind these creatures and the possible evidence that they may exist. <clears throat> Let's start from the beginning. The very beginning of the story. It is said that the myth began around 700 BC to about 1000 BC. When figures of merfolk were actually worshipped as gods, basically. The first encounters originate in ancient Assyria. The legend says that Argatus, the Syrian goddess of fertility, had fallen deeply in love with the local shepherd. But after she had accidentally killed him, she dove into the sea, hoping to turn into a fish to escape any punishment. But because of her beauty, she had only turned half fish. In some versions of the tale, she be became impregnated by the shepherd and tried to terminate the pregnancy by trying to drown herself. But, with her love of fish along her fish-shaped body, she turned into a mermaid as well as a sea goddess. This myth has been twisted over time and is possibly having influence over the modern day stories we hear. But, what about the civilizations that have absolutely no major contact with the powers of ancient civilizations? Perhaps even the ancient Dogon would be a good example. You know, to think about it, the Dogon tribe has so many legends that get tied into the supernatural. I should dedicate an episode to their culture. Anyway, the Dogon tribe in Africa viewed ancestral spirits called Nomos, as beings with upper humanoid torso, legs, and feet, but a fish-like tail and abdomen region. The Nomos are also described as gods that came from a planet in the Sirius star system. For those of you who are unaware, this planet is actually described as being half land and half water, which causes its inhabitants to develop amphibious features. This is backed up by modern day encounters with serious people, yeah, S I R I S, not serious. Like, are you serious? Now, the people from the planet Sirius, let's do it like that, describe the entities as humanoid figures with both a nose and, and gills. 
Now, of course, taking those modern encounters into consideration, could it be that when the ancient people told of fish like beings, could they could it be that they were talking about people that just look kind of like a fish? I mean, think about it. you have these extraterrestrials that have both features that would help them breathe in the water and breathe on land. That would pretty much make them sound like a fish to people back then. Of course, and to understand this concept and to understand a lot of ideas that I bring on to this show, you must understand one thing. Back then, people would see anything that would come out of regions that were impossible to reach at the time as godlike. So basically, for example, if a woman goes swimming off the coast of Miami and pops up in the ocean about 5,000 years ago, chances are you will hear something along the lines of the myth of how Aphrodite was born start brewing. So if mermaids are real, there is actually a possibility that they are misinterpreted animals of some type. Perhaps like the Kraken, which turned out to just be a giant squid. And unicorns. Not a lot of people know this, but those were actually rhinos. So, what could a mermaid be? Here's the scientific analysis. Take the typical image of a mermaid. Gorgeous girl with long flowing hair, a seashell bra, and perhaps a light green tail. This image is all well and good, but there are actually several problems with this. Let's start off with the hair. When in motion, the hair actually creates a lot of drag, which is why when you see runners, their hair is usually done up or shaved off, depending on what they're doing. Or swimmers, who try to shave off all of the hair on their body so that there would be no drag. Now, in order to prevent drag in a natural environment, the specimen would have to be bald and either hairless or with very, very thin hair. Second is the skin on the human parts of the body. What the mermaids are described with how they are described it is if they are nothing more than a girl with a tail suit. Now you, you know how you're washing dishes and you just get or you're just getting out of your bath and your skin's kind of wrinkly? This is caused by the salt inside your body being secreted into the outside water source. Prolonged con exposure can cause dehydration, which honestly, which can lead to several body failures that just result in a very ugly mess. This can be avoided with specially developed skin that either has a protective layer or is adapted to slow the process for long exposure to the water. Another problem with the skin is that it is simply too handle, I mean, it is too thin to handle. There, starting to get ahead of myself again. It's too thin to handle the cold oceanic temperatures. That is why blubber has been adapted into aquatic mammals. So instead of the skinny figure we see in cartoon mermaids, they would actually have to be relatively fat in appearance according to society's standards. Now coloration of the skin altogether is a problem. With that white of skin, somebody's going to spot you. And if that's somebody, maybe someone that's looking for a snack. Now unless they're near a coral bed and all the bright colors and we see mermaids can easily blend in 
their coloration is simply too revealing for nature. Those specimens usually have a much harder time simply surviving because they stand out so well. In fact, that imagines a lot of things with humanity. And as always, nature has a fix to the problem. Camouflage. <clears throat> Excuse me. If a mermaid is in the lineage that helped create humans, then obviously it will want to travel. So in order to adjust to the surroundings, the scales of the specimen would have to cover the entire body and would have to be somewhat reflective in order to better suit the surroundings. However, another possible road it can take is that the specimen can develop soft skin and its skin tone has to match its surroundings. Perhaps a bit more of a gray tone with areas with lots of rocks. Now, what I've done is propose two different possibilities for mermaid-like creatures, both of which have been proposed at another time in this whole debate, basically. The fat hairless creature is a possibility being thrown out there by sci-fi sci show fact or faked. I added in the total gray coloration to add to the theory of what a manatee could be. Yes! For those of you who don't know, a lot of people are suggesting that manatees are actually what brought up the mermaid myth. Anyway, that's um, for more on and later in the program. <clears throat> now the other specimen I proposed with reflective scales can have much different attributes than a manatee. It would have the streamlined figure necessary to swim at fast speeds and perhaps it would share some features like that of a dolphin and it could possibly possess a collapsible rib cage to allow it for to trend into deeper waters now this version of the creature was proposed over the controversial mermaid documentary aired on animal planet not so long ago now please remember we are only talking about mermaid creatures that are natural to earth at this point the appearance of beings from another planet around the Sirius will be looked into farther in the program. But now it's time for a commercial. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ghost hunters, don't waste time doing background research at libraries. Learn to research smart from the convenience of your computer. Get the book Ghost Hunters Research Guide to Free Internet Sources by paranormal researcher Elizabeth Egan Cox. The user-friendly Ghost Hunters Research Guide to Free Internet Sources provides exact internet addresses and tutorials for hundreds of websites that have critical information you need about a person, events, and places. Become a better ghost hunter now. The Ghost Hunters Research Guide to Free Internet Sources is available wherever books are sold. Visit the author's website for more information. It's www. Dot Elizabeth Egan Cox dot net. The Paranormal Raider Force has a lot of new and exciting projects coming up. A coming documentary, a new format to our radio show, and so much more. If you're interested in checking it out, visit our official website at francinfiles.webs.com. That is spelled F R A N D S E N F I N. L E S dot webs dot com. And check out our recently improved website for all the latest news, shows, and much more. And speaking of projects, next Saturday we'll be airing a one hour live special dedicated to Doomsday. And with an introduction to our upcoming program, Operation Sunset Rose. Join Dakota Franson in the chat room to discuss what evidence is being presented that has shrouded fear 
of the date, December 21st. Be sure to listen in and invite your friends to the event with the postings available on Facebook and Google+. We hope to see you then. And welcome back to Journals of Supernatural Adventure. Tonight we are discussing the possibility that the stories of mermaids we hear as children could actually be reality. Now that before the break I was talking about the possible forms that a modern mermaid could actually be. Of course the efforts to find out what a mermaid actually could be are not new endeavors. One theory that is majorly accepted is that the manatee is the primal suspect for giving rise to the mermaid myth. In fact, because of this is why the scientific name for not only the manatee but the dugong includes the phrase Sirenia to give reference to the sirens from Greek mythology. Now the second theorized creature is perhaps a more likely example that is not including an animal we already know about. The coloration of his scales would be perfect for deep ocean travel. Not only that, it would it would just blend in easier out in the middle of the open. Plus, it would be able to hold its breath for a long time. These ideas actually sprouted a lesser known theory of human evolution. This theory is titled the Aquatic Ape Theory. It is basically a notion that human lineage actually came from the water. Animal and Planet described it perfectly. Parts of the human skeleton can be even found in the various aquatic mammals, similar methods of communication. Heck, even on a few occasions, similar to pastimes. The most universal being the art of song. So the possibility of biological mermaids is actually pretty high when you think about it. Who knows? We know more about space than we do about the water. Now whether or not you believe in evolution, things are much different than they were when the gods were present and all of the religious texts were written. Obviously they would want to adjust it to where their creations can change in order to survive just in case something happened that wasn't of their control. So, who is to say that modern marine mammals <coughs> are not descendants of a mermaid-like creature? The most likely way for this to happen would be like this. Several millions of years ago, Groups of creatures had gone to the oceans, realized, and while they were there, they realized there were some resources there that could help sustain life without some major problems. Evidence of this change can easily be found in skeletal remains. Just look up random, random skeleton pictures online of different creatures. And what when you do, if you do this, I'm not saying you have to, but if you do this, look carefully at how similar the bone structure is. Using this logic and looking through pictures, it is easy to see, like, like for example, manatees and giant sloths may share a common ancestor. Heck, it would be safe to say that manatees actually came from a mermaid version of a sloth. Now the aquatic ape theory suggests a similar thing happened with humanity except at one point in time we came back out of the water which is kind of a point that really doesn't match up with anyone and because of its vagueness it's not really widely accepted not because of there is has been a recorded creature in the water that humans could have originated from but it is the fact that we don't know how or why we would come out of the water. I mean, right now we would probably jump back in for rising oceans. 
However, since I was smart enough to peek in through various fields, an explanation has come up. It lies in the loose terms of the ancient alien theory. It's not all specific, like it seems on the show, but there's a lot to it that could help explain a lot of other phenomena. On previous episodes, I have proposed the idea that so-called gods actually experimented with the DNA of various civilizations that have helped influence mankind and the ge genetic diversity of our own planet in order to create mankind and several other species. Now, along with mankind, they experimented with creating various other creatures. Now, perhaps mermaids were one of those creatures. Perhaps the reason we don't see them today is that they were hunted because they were just simply too similar f or he to humans for comfort, just like what happened to the more humanoid Giganthropithecus species that helped create the modern Bigfoot. There are depictions of similar scenarios found in Egypt. So if anything like that happened, it is possible that if any survived, they're hiding from us. They remain elusive and rarely surface. The only way to spot these kind of things is constant traveling in the ocean near locations where the stories are added to the myth on almost a daily basis. Where are these places? Perhaps go near the coast of Kiryat Yam in Israel. There is some recent mermaid hype there. Or travel near Japan! Around there, there's supposedly a gigantic whale-like creature called the Ninjin. The Ninjin, I classified it in with the mermaid thing because it pretty much looks like what you get if you were to cross a whale with a human being. Heck, sometimes it's said to be able to walk upright, which is kind of scary when you think about it. This myth has spread so far, so it can be very difficult to choose the right spots. There's even mermaid myths where there's no water. So, that's something to think about right there. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we've run out of time. Tune in next week for a special one-hour episode on Doomsday. And the official launching of Operation Sunset Rose. Listen in for an analysis of the allegations that December 21st is the end of the world. Readings of Nostradamus prophecies. <coughs> and much more. In the second half of the show, we will finish up with the allegations of Armageddon and officially launch Operation Sunset Rose. A project run by my team and I that could potentially change the world. Catch up on updates from the team at our official website, ransomfiles.webs.com, to watch for more details on all sorts of projects straight from the team. Check out our show, The Journey, that showcases all of our investigations that have held supernatural activity. View, view through our online store, PRF Layer, to look for supplies and paranormal research and much more. Look through episodes of this show right now now and catch up on previous topics and feel free to donate to Operation Sunset Rose you can find you can also find out where you can talk to us exclusively on hitting the find us tab on our official website anyway we hope to see you all next week for our very special episode if you got an invitation from us feel free to invite your friends to listen in Everybody's welcome to come. We don't discriminate. What's up? Anyway, we'll see you next week. I know it's a little odd, but we kind of have to jump on this train. Anyway, see you all later. <laughs>